don't worry. I wasn't planning on wearing these pants much longer. Hi, I'm Matt Breslau. Welcome to another Game Collection Pickups video. As you can see, I Game Collection picked up quite a lot of things. We're talking about July 2019. Um, if I count everything individually, it comes out to like more than a hundred different items. 82 flat if we're only counting items themselves, but if we also include boxes, manuals, and uh, you know, all the great fun I had, it's a lot actually. So we're gonna go through this, not quickly, unfortunately, since I never seem to be able to do that, but um, we'll give each item a little bit of time in the spotlight. I'll tell a story about it as quickly as I can then I'll reminisce with you about that story. Then I'll tell you about the item. And then we'll move on to the next thing. In that order. The way I seem to usually do it. So why don't we just start because this is already taking forever. Alright, so I got not only a ton of games, but uh, manual boys! Okay, we're gonna start with those. The manuals that I got with games, uh, those are going to be shown off with the games themselves, but these are manuals either for games that I don't own or already own. So here we go. Gotta do this quickly. Duck Hunt. Duck Hunt. I don't think you need to know much about Duck Hunt. This manual, um, along with quite a lot of these, I actually got from someone on Let Go. Uh, Jackie and I went to meet this woman in the parking lot of Costco. Um, and she was just trying to offload some of her husband's stuff. So, yeah, she unloaded quite a bit of that stuff on the two of us, who paid very little money to own it all. So thank you for the Duck Hunt manual. I also got the Gyromite manual from her. Um, both of these games I already own, so now I have their manuals. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Already own Kung Fu, but she gave me the manual for that also. Same thing with Millipede. Thank you. And same thing with Pinball. And the manual I was probably the happiest to come across, thanks to her. A game I absolutely already own, uh, Super Mario Bros. 2. I decided to put this in a protective plastic case because I care about this one more than any of the other NES manuals, and I only have this one plastic case. I've been meaning to buy more. Super Spike V-Ball, another game that I already had. So, now I got the manual for that, too. Uh, she also gave me the manual for John Madden Football, which, just last month in June, uh, I didn't have that game. Uh, Jackie's friend George gave it to me, so one month later, this woman gives me the manual for it. So thanks, this is the Super Nintendo version. Now I have the game and the manual. And then for Game Gear, I bought a ton of Game Gear stuff off my buddy Ben, because he had a yard sale uh, this past July. Um, games and manuals and even some Game Gear accessories and things, but let's stick with the manuals first. Again, these are either for games I already owned or don't have. So here's Caesar's Palace. I don't have this game, but Ben used to. Um, I guess he just ended up keeping the manual, so I got the manual from him. Ben also lost his copy of Chicago Syndicate, so he gave me just the manual to that. I already owned Columns, but now I have the manual. I already had NBA Jam, but now I have the manual. That's awesome. I do, I do not have Road Rash for Game Gear, but glad I have the manual. Thanks, Ben. Poker Face Paul's Gin and Poker pa Poker pa Pace Poker Fall Solitaire. Poker Face Paul's Solitaire. Don't have either of these. Neither did Ben anymore, so now I've got them both. Unfortunately, Ben had the manual for Shaq Fu, but I'm happy that he did. Uh, thankfully, he didn't have the game. Or is it not thankfully, because that means I don't have the game either. Shinobi 2, The Silent Fury, don't have this. Uh, hope to someday soon. And Super Space Invaders, which I don't have, but again, maybe soon. He also gave me the manual for the Sega Game Gear. I already had a Sega Game Gear, but I didn't have the manual for it. So, now I do. Awesome, right? 
And probably the coolest thing that I got out of Ben, as far as the manuals were concerned, uh, I got the Game Genie instruction manual slash codebook, which I didn't have. I already have a Game Genie. This is for the uh, NES. Ooh. And uh, now I have the codebook for it. I could have just looked these codes up online, of course, but oh, isn't it just so cool to leap through this book and like actually look at the codes? Like, uh, oh man. Like Clash of Demon Head. Don't die when power hits zero. That's a good fucking code. Especially if you're a cheating bastard. Like we often can be. My exes. <laughs> Those are the manuals that I got that didn't come with games this month. And now let's move on to some actual beef. Alright, I suppose the first thing up on the list since I talked a lot about Ben would be to knock some Game Gear games out of the way, so we'll do just that. One of the games that Ben gave me that came with the manual is Prince of Persia. Here's the manual. Thanks, Ben. If you don't know about Prince of Persia, well, you're living under a rock. Prince of Persia is an action platformer slash puzzle game? It has puzzle elements that came out for a wide variety of not only consoles, but tons of home computers. It's very popular and very famous. It was made into a movie, although a million years later. And um, the very first versions of Prince of Persia to come out on home computers used rotoscoping to make their graphics, which was very revolutionary in video games at the time. It might happen a lot nowadays, not so much back then. This is the Game Gear version. I actually don't know if this version has rotoscoping, but uh, I don't see why it wouldn't. The Game Gear, even though it was only 8-bit, was capable, just like all of those 8-bit home computers, of doing graphics over rotoscopes. So, your guess is as good as mine. I'm guessing it probably does. But thank you, Ben. I'm happy to own Prince of Persia with the manual. Thanks. All right, next up, with its manual, Paperboy 2 for Game Gear. And there's the manual. So, Paperboy 2 is like Paperboy 1, except twice as paper, and also probably twice as boy. Um, you're a paperboy on a route to deliver papers to your irate and ornery customers, and there is shit going on that you have to avoid because the entire neighborhood seems to be out to kill you. Paperboy 1 is one of my favorite games of all time, um, which is saying a lot of Paperboy because a lot of people they don't usually have a lot to say about Paperboy. It's not that it's a bad game, it's just it's considered relatively average. Um, I've never played Paperboy 2 though. I've only ever seen footage of it, so I'm excited to try out Paperboy 2 and let my love grow and flourish and seep into this second unholy mass that is the second Paperboy. Thank you, Ben. Appreciate it, as always. He wouldn't be my buddy Ben if he didn't spend a ton of time playing sports games on his Game Gear growing up. So of course I got Fred Couples Golf for Game Gear. And here's the manual. I like golf, but as we've stated before on this show, whatever you want to call it, the Game Collection Universe show, I don't like golf video games very much. It's, um... I do, but I don't. It's weird. It's definitely not as much as I dislike uh, pinball video games, but um, golf video games can be kind of boring. I prefer to go out and play real golf, because I'm that guy. But I'm still happy to have Fred Couples Golf. It's a golf game. What else do I need to say? Thank you, Ben. And Ben also gave me another sports game, The Majors Pro Baseball. Here's the manual. Thank you, Ben. Uh, it's a baseball game. What more do I need to say? I am not the biggest fan of baseball in general, so baseball games are not the biggest recipients of my love and affection. But look, it's a video game. It doesn't matter what's here. It matters what's here. Thanks, Ben, for this baseball game on Game Gear that I will probably never play. Just kidding. I play everything in my collection. It might just be a while before I decide to finally pop this in and go, what the fuck does this play like? If you thought that's where the Ben stopped, you're wrong. There are two other games that he gave me, but uh, no manuals. Here's Joe Montana Football. This was actually very popular on the Genesis, but I guess they just had to get it on the Game Gear even though nobody owned it. 
So, Joe Montana football, you can imagine, it's a football game. Who likes football? That's right, not me. I'm not a big fan of football. I guess that makes me un-American. Woo. Maple syrup, I guess. Time to move to Canada. Joe Montana football is a football game starring Joe Montana. I don't know who Joe Montana is. I assume he's a footballman, and if he's not, then he doesn't deserve to be on the cover of this game. What can I say? And last from Ben, although not in total, just the last of the games I received from Ben. There are other things, and we'll come to them later. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie for Game Gear. Uh, I actually have played this game. I've emulated it a couple times in my past. And I enjoy this game, actually, despite the fact that it's on Game Gear. <laughs> um, it's not bad. I actually recommend it, especially if you like Power Rangers. Thank you, Ben, for both these games. And, of course, for all these other ones. I can't hold all these games, but thank you. Also, the manuals, man. Thanks so much. Manuals rock. <laughs> thanks so much for all the manuals. Thanks so much for all the games. But we're not done talking about you. We'll just come back to you later. Let's talk about other things. Alright, here's another game that I received with its manual from that woman um, from whom Jackie and I bought all that stuff out of her car that she was offloading that was her husband's. It's Street Fighter 2 for Super Nintendo. And here's the manual. Uh, if you don't know what Street Fighter is, then my explaining it to you is unfortunately going to have to suffice, because as much as I like Street Fighter, I haven't played them that much. I really do like them, though. It's just a lot more fun to play Street Fighter with a friend, and I don't have a whole lot of friends who play retro games. I'm very lonely in that respect. Um, but Street Fighter is a series where you beat the shit out of each other. It's a tournament fighter, so... One side, another side, beat, 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 beat. If you s switch to the other side of your opponent, you automatically face each other. There's comboing, there's combinations, button combos, I mean, and, and, and tons and tons of uh, punch kick sound effects. It's great. So this is the second Street Fighter. Yes, there was a first one, but damned if you can find it. It's most likely arcades slash Commodore computers only. Um, and this is probably the better one, in my opinion. Like, 90 versions of just Street Fighter 2 came out. Just for, like, Super Nintendo, Genesis, Game Gear, Game Boy. Whatever. Thank you, Nikki is, is her name, for giving me these games for money. So selling them to me and to my girlfriend. Thank you. Have a block. Another thing I got from Nikki, also is uh, WWF Super Wrestlemania, and here is the manual to that. <laughs> um, I am not a big pro wrestling fan growing up. I used to watch it once in a while. I don't really watch it ever anymore, except with friends who are into it. So, like, once in a blue moon, because I don't have many friends who like pro wrestling. I can name only, like, three, and one of them is Ben. Um, but he didn't give this game to me. No, no. Thank you, Nikki, from Let Go. I appreciate it. And, uh, yeah. It's a wrestling game where you play as Super WrestleMania. The character. There he is right there. Surely that character is not Hulk Hogan. Surely. Alright, more Game Gear stuff, but this time not from Ben. Um, Jackie and I, in July, went to New Jersey GamerCon. Cherry Hill, New Jersey, um, because I go to conventions a lot, and I bought a bunch of shit there. Look at all the shit I bought this month. A lot of it came from that. So one of the things I got was a complete inbox Lemmings for Sega Game Gear. Lemmings is one of my favorite puzzle games. It might be one of my favorite games of all time, really. Um, but yeah, I got a complete inbox version of Lemmings. So there's the box. And, of course, for theatrics, here is the manual, and here is the game in its protective case. Lemmings is a puzzle game. Um, it's real-time strategy, where you are trying to get lemmings, little green-haired creatures wearing blue tunics, from point A to point B by assigning them tasks to make their way through the level. But the trick is, they never stop walking, so you have to be crafty. And there's lots of bullshit going on. 
I love Lemmings. I'm really glad I picked this up. It was super cheap too, and uh, I got it for way less than it's actually worth because I guess the people running that booth mislabeled it. And I got it even cheaper than that because I haggle all the time. So Lemmings in the box with the manual for Game Gear. Booyah. Take that, America. I don't know what I mean by that. <laughs> Take that, people who don't like lemmings. Oh my god! I got video games from that one woman from Let Go named Nikki out of her trunk, and some of them came with the manuals. One of those was Pro Wrestling for NES. Here's the manual. Wow! Pro Wrestling is a pro wrestling video game for the NES. It was actually made by Nintendo. It's a black box game. And it doesn't have any real pro wrestlers. They're all nameless, faceless randos. But it's pro wrestling. A lot of people do not like this game because regular pro wrestling games with real wrestlers by name and with their likenesses uh, are always better. Um, I have a soft spot for this game even though I don't like wrestling games just because I thought it was cool that Nintendo tried their hand at something that they really had no business trying to do. They should have just licensed WWF at the time. Now it's WWE, but back then it was WWF. They should have just licensed WWF, WWF and made a wrestling game that way, but they tried their hand at it themselves. And some people love this game. Many people hate this game. <laughs> Whatever. It's pro wrestling. There's the manual. And here's me being happy I own both of them. Man, it just wouldn't be this video without more fucking Game Gear games. It's The Lion King, the hardest game ever made by Disney. Um, and by Disney, I mean uh, Westwood Studios, I think, made the Game Gear version. I don't remember. I believe so. Anyway, it's The Lion King for Game Gear. I got this at a flea market in Belmore, um, which is here on Long Island. And apparently that flea market operates every Sunday but it's very far out of the way, and there are a lot of resellers there, so I only go once in a blue moon just to try and pick things up off of people who aren't resellers, which is usually few and far between. The flea market scene out here has been kind of sullied by the fact that so many resellers are going and selling games at retail price. It's a flea market. That is not what it's for. Go peddle your goods somewhere else and leave me to find real deals. Like this one, The Lion King. I got it at a person who wasn't a reseller for only a dollar. Thank you very much, person who isn't a reseller at a swap meet. Thanks. So, Jackie and I were at New Jersey Gamer Con, like I said earlier, and uh, I wanted to pick up an import game. Not because I needed to, I just wanted to. And there was a booth near the entrance of the dealer floor that said, Super Famicom Games, and it was like five for ten dollars. So I looked through like every single game they had and all of them were either Japanese duplicates of games I already owned in English on the Super Nintendo or games that I just really didn't care to have right now. Um, I'd rather save my money and get some of the bigger boys out of the way when I'm at a convention because they're easier to find there. Um, but there was one game that I wanted that has been on my list for some time and I finally got it. And uh, it's this one. It's Crayon Shinchan Arashio Yobuenji. Yeah. I'm not translating that for you. You don't deserve it. <laughs> um, it's a Shinchan game. I actually don't know too much about this, um, but I have watched a lot of my favorite Let's Players on YouTube um, play this game, and I thought it was really interesting, so I wanted to pick it up. So, I did. And, of course, I gave it an end label because Super Famicom games don't have end labels. Because why? So, yeah, that's sitting pretty in my collection. And even though I only walked away with the one game, uh, I only paid two bucks for it because if it was five for ten and I was only buying one, they were just like, alright, then two dollars. Bam, two dollars. Thanks a lot. Um, a lot of you might know Shin-Chan because there was an anime that came out here in America on Adult Swim called Shin-Chan. Um, that's basically just the English dub of an anime that came out in Japan called Crayon Shinchan. So, now I have the game, one of the many games apparently, um, that goes with this anime. There it is. 
I'm not doing a very good job of being quick about these. Let's see if I can be faster. Did someone say Game Gear game? <laughs> I got a lot of Game Gear games. It's Echo the Dolphin for Game Gear. I got this at that same flea market where I got the Lion King, and I got this from someone who, again, wasn't a reseller, thankfully. So, Echo the Dolphin. It's a game where you're a dolphin swimming around, aliens kidnap your pod, and you gotta fucking fight the aliens and get your pod back. But you gotta do it on Game Gear. This game came out for Genesis first, and it was very popular on Genesis, but then I got ported all over the place, including Game Gear. I have never played the Game Gear version, but I've always wanted it because I want to own everything, right? So here it is. Echo the Dolphin on Game Gear. Bam! Dolphy boy! You know what, while I have him here, I think I'm just gonna finish up all the Game Gear games that I got. So, at um, New Jersey GamerCon, I did buy another two Game Gear games, and they're both Disney Game Gear games. One of them, uh, I love this game on Genesis, and I'm even quite fond of it on the Master System. It's Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse. Wonderful platformer where you play as Mickey Mouse, trying to... Um, something. I think you have to save Minnie from an evil witch, if I remember the plot correctly. This version is actually not bad. It's the Master version, uh, Master System version, just shrunken down to fit on the Game Gear, and I'm fond of that version, so I know I will love this game. Uh, but I also got Donald Duck in Deep Duck Trouble, and uh, this game is not an American game. This game on Game Gear never came out in the United States. This is a European copy. How do I know that? I just do. There isn't actually anything on this that specifies that it's a European copy, but I know for a fact that this game was never released in North America. And it's not in Japanese, ergo, this is a PAL copy of Deep Duck Trouble, starring Donald Duck. That's awesome. I love this game. It's actually super fun. I've already beaten it two times because it's really, really fun. Um, honestly, I recommend picking this up. You can find it online. There are people in the U.S. who have it, so you don't need to import it from Europe. I recommend it. And, uh, yeah. Here's me being happy about that. Yay! I went back to Asset Recovery Liquidators with Jackie in July, and we picked up a lot of stuff there. Um, mostly some old 70s and very early 80s games, but I want to talk about them anyway, because, I mean, I bought them, right? Uh, for Intellivision... I got Zaxxon, and I also got Ladybug. The end label to Ladybug is, uh, unfortunately it's seen better days, but I'll pick up a replacement for this eventually. I just really wanted it because, well, it's it's hard. It's a little harder to find than most in television games, so I wanted it. They were only asking a dollar. So yeah, um, funny story is they were actually asking $25 for another version of this same game that had a better label. and. It's not worth $25, and it's worth more than a dollar, quite a little bit more than a dollar, actually. So I opted to just get the version with the shitty label, because I didn't want to have to run the risk of going, jumping through hoops to try and finagle my way around the $25 price tag on the other version. So. And then, of course, Zaxxon. Ladybug is a Pac-Man clone that I actually really enjoy. It's really inventive, and I, even though it is a Pac-Man clone, it is, um... I wouldn't call it more fun than Pac-Man, but I think a lot of people would get more enjoyment out of this than Pac-Man because it has rotating walls that you can control, so it's not all the way like Pac-Man. And then Zaxxon is a, um, it's an isometric space shoot 'em up which is the best I can do to describe it. It's super fun, it has some strategy elements added to it too, where you have to pick up fuel and, just, and you have to fly in a specific way to avoid oncoming obstacles, fly through gaps, over walls, under ceilings, it's really fun. I'm really happy I have both these games. So let's stop talking about them now. While I was at the flea market in Belmore, I actually met up with a buddy of mine, Justin, who was meeting me there specifically so that he could sell me a couple things that he had prearranged to sell me a couple days earlier. That's actually the whole reason I was at the uh, flea market. I just decided to also buy some other things while I was there. But I was there specifically to meet up with him, and one of the things I bought off him for super cheap, because he was having a fire sale, was Home Alone for Sega Genesis in the box. It is not complete, there is no manual, unfortunately, but there is the cartridge, it's in wonderful condition, and I'm really happy that I own this. 
Uh, I love the movies Home Alone and Home Alone 2. Uh, you know, both Home Alone movies, because there aren't any others, and goddamn you if you say even for a second that there are. Okay, now that we've understood each other. So I really actually enjoy playing the Home Alone games, even if they're a little bit sucky. I just think they have kind of a charm to them, so I'm super happy to own this. Thank you, Justin. I really appreciate it. While out doing some traditional yard sailing with Jackie, we actually decided to stop at a Goodwill because, well, we decided to. It was an incredibly hot day, and staying in the car and going back and forth all over the place to yard sale, while of course it's always fun, with it being so hot out this July, um, it got very challenging very quickly because I'm starting to get fat. I'll just let that sink in, like it's sinking into my brain. And um, I don't think anybody really likes to be in the heat, so Jackie was also really unhappy. <laughs> I say really unhappy, she didn't mind. It was just like, I'd rather not have to be out in the sun longer than we need to. Jackie really enjoys going yard sailing. It was just a really hot day. I agreed with her. So we decided to stop yard sailing and being out in the sun and start going thrifting. And we stopped in the Goodwill in Ronkonkoma here on the island. And we actually found a couple things. One of which was the Wii Fit Bundle. Um, doesn't have the game in there. Actually, it, it didn't even have the game when we bought it. Um, but it has the box and the... Uh, balance board is inside. I'll even pull it out to prove it because I feel like that's something I always have to do. Now I already own the Wii balance board. In fact, not only do I own this one that's right here, that's sufficient enough, I think it is. Not only do I own that one that's right there, uh, I have a balance board that I bought at a Goodwill years ago. And I also have a balance board from the Wii Fit Plus bundle, and that one is still in the cellophane. So I own three Wii balance boards, and I really don't <clears throat> need that many. So if somebody wants to come take one or two of them away from me, please do. But yeah, uh, I never really played Wii Fit. I was not the type of person to exercise when the Wii was popular. I exercise now frequently when I can because I'm trying to get not fat, but it was super cool to see that there, and uh, even though it wasn't complete, I'm happy I have the box. I do have Wii Fit, and I already had a balance board, so even if this were just the box, it's technically complete now. Hooray! The other thing that we got when we were out at Goodwill was Rayman Origins for Xbox 360. Uh, I've actually wanted this game for a while, but I never picked it up. It's a platformer. I'm sure I don't have to explain to you what Rayman is. It's a platformer, cutesy. It's got a lot of quirk to it. Uh, it was made by Ubisoft, so, of course, how can you go wrong? I'm just kidding. This game's actually phenomenal. When I make that joke, I'm talking about all of Ubisoft's other decisions. Uh, I really enjoyed the Rayman series, and it was super cool to find this. Only a couple bucks of goodwill, and uh, Jackie was nice enough to pick it up for me, because she's beautiful and lovely, and I love her, and yay. And hopefully, 17 years from now, when we're no longer together, um, which at that time, it'll probably be like the 16th year that that would be true. Just kidding. I love you, Jackie. Um, anyway. Forget that whole joke. Rayman Origins, thanks Jackie, and thank you Ubisoft for making this game. It's great. Pick it up. Let's talk about some other stuff that I got at Asset Recovery. Um, I not only picked up some Intellivision games, but I got some Atari 2600 games too. We'll talk about all of them at once because it makes it easier because they don't have a whole lot to them. Dragonfire, an iMagic game. Um, it's this weird action puzzle game where you have to run around on the screen and pick up a whole bunch of items before the dragon flames you to death. And it gets faster and faster and faster, and there's a lot of strategy involved. It's Dragonfire. I like this game a lot. Then Firefighter, a game I've never played, but uh, I can imagine it's about fighting fires for 2600. Another iMagic game. Football. I don't like football, but I bought the game anyway. <laughs> We've talked about this. I don't like football. 
Another iMagic game, Star Voyager. I don't know too much about this, but if you took all of the video games from the 70s and early 80s that have something to do with space, and you buried them underground, the Earth's crust would rise 40 feet. <laughs> That's how many games about space there are on 70s and early 80s consoles. It's a space game for an 80s and late 70s console. How different could it be? The answer is different enough to warrant its own title. Another iMagic game. And Venture by Coleco. This is actually a 2600 game even though it's tan. It's a third party game that Coleco made in the style of a Coleco Vision cartridge, but it goes into an Atari 2600. Sneaky, sneaky. It actually even says right there in yellow, video game cartridge for use with the Atari video computer system and Sears Video Arcade, which is a clone system that Sears released to sell Atari 2600s because they wanted some of the profit. But yeah, there's five Atari 2600 games. Four out of five of them are third party games. Some of the best Atari 2600 games are third party. So, I'm not complaining. Are you? I don't often buy things sealed because I like to get a lot of use out of the things that I buy. But if there is something that I just know I'm probably never going to use, and I happen to find it sealed, then yeah, I'll pick it up if the price is right. So I found the original Nintendo DS headset totally sealed, still in this blister packaging. Um, I would love to show what it looks like for real, but you're just going to have to deal with this 2D image. Uh, I've never used one of these, and I actually never knew anybody who owned one. It was never really necessary. I never knew anyone who wanted to play DS online because the connection was terrible back then. Online gaming was relatively new. It was becoming the norm at this time. But that didn't stop Nintendo from making accessories to capitalize on that sort of thing. So here we are. It's sealed, so there isn't much else I can say about it, but there is a nice little thing at the top that says compatible with Pokemon Diamond and Pokemon Pearl. It says, now it's easier than ever to talk with friends around the world during Nintendo Wi-Fi connection play. Yeah, say that five times fast. And look, look at these two kids. They're talking to each other. Or maybe they're talking to other people, and they're just two examples of two different situations where people are talking her to one of her friends and him to one of his friends but not to each other because as we know boys and girls can't be friends that's weird right anyway i think this is cool so i picked it up for only a dollar it was a no-brainer it is sealed so thank you person who was not a reseller at the belmore flea market Mwah. how many kinds of parties can you name all right, I'm going to stop you right there because the most important one is right here. Monster Party. This is a very uncommon game for the NES that I found at New Jersey GamerCon in July with Jackie. And uh, they were not asking very much for it at all. So I finally have this in my collection and I'm really, really happy that I do. Monster Party is a platformer where you play as a dude who is hanging out with a whole bunch of weird um, B-movie horror trope monsters like the Wolfman and the Dracula Man and the Mummy Man and the Franken Man and um, Medusa and the Sea Creature Man and is that supposed to be Bigfoot? Whatever. Monster Party. Buy this game, play this game. I think it's a lot of fun and it's very quirky and uh, it's pretty uncommon. So yeah, have yourself an uncommon treat. Why not? Mm. Nothing says I love you more than giving the man you love a video game made by Enix for the Super Nintendo. It's unfortunate then that I bought this for myself instead of receiving it as a gift from Jackie. Just kidding. I didn't receive it as a gift from Jackie, but I'm just kidding about any of that. I don't want to make any implications that people owe other people things just because they're in relationships. I don't personally believe that. Anyway, look, it's an Enix game for the Super Nintendo. Are we happy with the jokes that I've made and the way I've tried to cover up for those jokes? Cool. It's the Seventh Saga! 
Uh, I don't know very much about this game, other than that it's relatively uncommon. And um, I have heard people say that this game is very good, and I've had people recommend it to me. But I really don't know too much about it. So here, here, here I am, showing you the Seventh Saga, and saying to you, I've never played this, but I will very soon. I'm excited to experience this game for the first time, completely blind. I have never seen footage of this game. I cannot wait. That's one of the best things about being a collector, is you get to experience games for the first time that you could have had when you were a kid. And just by complete happenstance, as time moved forward, you never saw anyone play this game, you never saw footage of it, no one ever really talked about it, so now you get to experience it totally blind. I love that, and I'm probably going to love this, knowing me. It's the Seventh Saga for Super Nintendo, which I got at New Jersey GamerCon. Thank you, me, and not Jackie. This joke is over now. Alright, I'm getting this one out of the way just because uh, I don't want to reach over and grab stuff from the back. That's, that's a lot of standing and leaning. So, uh, we're just going to start working our way forward. I'm going to get those out of the way now so that I'm tired at the end of this video. Oh my god, it's the Milton Bradley Microvision. In. The. Box. But not only that... Wow! Wow, look at all this stuff! Oh my god, there's a Star Trek game in here. Oh man, oh, oh, there's a Connect 4 in here in the box. Wow, what, what the, what? Oh my god. Okay, to anyone who has no idea what the hell this is, um, well you're in for a history treat because I'm gonna tell you. Here. We. Go. This is the box for the Milton Bradley Microvision, which you probably have never heard of, but that's okay. Most people probably haven't. The Microvision was the very first portable hand, uh, portable video game system, I guess you could say. Yes, there were LCD games before this, but this was the first one that used cartridges. So it was its own console, and you could swap out the games. This predates the Game Boy by 10 years. This came out in 79, I believe. Yeah, 79. And, oh my goodness. This thing is super cool. I love it. What else can I really say about it other than that? Well, it was pretty revolutionary for the time. I'm going to show you the unit now. I'm going to just put the box down here. <laughs> this is the Microvision with Blockbuster installed in it. And, uh, yeah, I say installed because... <laughs> This is a cartridge. This whole thing, including the name of the game, the screen, and the functions for the buttons. But this is what the Microvision looks like underneath a game. You can see all the internals. Here's the screen, don't touch it. And here is the pressure pad where your inputs become a reality. And this is not a button, it's an analog dial for a game like Blockbuster, for example. So yes. Here's Blockbuster and the manual. Yeah, this thing was actually super revolutionary for the time. Of course, it's super large, so you can't put this thing in your fucking pocket. But who would want to? Because not many people bought this thing, and that's why no one knows about it. Um, it also came with probably the uh, very first uh, licensed handheld game ever. Star Trek Phaser Strike. That's pretty cool. Um, and of course it comes with the manual. Um, Microvision games actually aren't that hard to collect for because there aren't very many of them and they're all relatively cheap. So I was also able to purchase Connect 4 for the Microvision uh, complete in the box. Not only do I have the box, but of course I have this very good condition version of Connect 4. This thing looks phenomenal. Um, and as you can see, it has its own little graphics painted right there on the screen overlay. I think that that's cute. Um, and here is the manual. So yeah, this thing is uh, super obscure, almost no one knows about it, and that's what I think I like about it the most. It was revolutionary, and it really satisfies my collector itch. Um, most versions 
of the Microvision came with Blockbuster in the Microvision box, so it doesn't have its own box if you bought it with the Microvision. But it also was sold separately, just in case. So most versions of the Microvision come like this, with Blockbuster already installed. Probably the biggest drawback about this thing, and I promise I'll wrap this up so we can actually be quick about this, is that it uses 9 volt batteries, and not just one, two 9 volt batteries that people don't usually carry around for anything except their smoke detectors. So yeah, this came and it very quickly went, but it's a cool piece of history and I'm really glad I have it and the games that came with it. Everything all together, $40. Really not bad because it's worth quite a bit more. I'm very happy. Also at Asset Recovery Liquidators, I'm looking to start finishing up um, my N64 collection. It's not that I have nearly every game, I'm far from it actually, but I have most of the games for the console already that I wanted to collect. So now the rest of them are just finishing up all the loose ends. So when we were at Asset Recovery Liquidators, Jackie and I, uh, I decided to pick up NFL Quarterback Club 98. It's a sports game, it's a football game, I don't have to say much more about it, but I picked it up because it's time to start finishing the N64 collection, finally. So, these are necessary now, and luckily they're easy to come by. Look, an end label I gave to it, because as usual, these don't have end labels normally. So, I'm a cool guy and I do that myself. Let's move on. From that woman, uh, Nikki, from Let Go, I also got Wheel of Fortune Family Edition. Uh, I really love Wheel of Fortune. I've talked about it here on this show before because I've purchased other variants of Wheel of Fortune uh, that I showed off on this show. I watch it a lot with my grandma, and uh, owning any version of Wheel of Fortune is fun because then I get to play it at home, which is super cool. So yeah, Wheel of Fortune Family Edition. So, uh, so the questions, I guess, have to do more with family-oriented topics like um, don't drink and drive. Who knows? I certainly don't. I haven't played this yet. Whoops! One game that I loved growing up was Tasmania for Game Boy. Um, so when my buddy Justin was having his fire sale, I noticed that he was selling Tasmania for Super Nintendo, and he was selling it in the box. So, of course, that was one of the things I got when I met up with him in Belmore at the flea market. Uh, I say in the box only because, of course, uh, you know, actually, wait, wait a second, no! This does have the manual. I'm thinking of a different game. I'll do that one next then so you understand what I was uh, confused about. Check it out. It's the cartridge. It's the manual. It's the box. It's a complete set. Whoops. It's a, it's a platformer where you play as Taz, the Tasmanian Devil, and then things happen where you go spinny spinny and, and he makes the noise where he goes a lot. Sorry you had to see that, especially my girlfriend. Sorry you had to see that. But anyway, yeah. Thanks, Justin. I'm happy to have that, too. Uh, let's talk about the other one, so you'll understand my confusion about the manual. My confusion arises from the fact that I also received Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, from Justin at the flea market. So yeah, two Home Alone games. One and two. For two different consoles. Um, my confusion stems from this game because this one is the one that is not fully complete. It is just the cartridge with the cartridge tray. There is no manual in the box. So, almost complete, not quite. We've talked about my feelings about Home Alone games before, so same opinions, just stick a two after Home Alone. And now we have this game. Home Alone 2 Lost in New York, hooray. Let's talk PlayStation 2 shovelware. Let's talk Xbox 360 shovelware. Just kidding. It's not technically shovelware, but it might as well be because I don't care about these games very much, even though one of them is PlayStation 2's Namco Museum, which I got at a yard sale with Jackie. Funny story, I'll try to make it short. The dude was also selling a PlayStation 2 to go along with this. Uh, I already had one, but he was like, no, nah, man, come on, I want to get rid of it. Offer me something. I'm like, I already have this, man, so like, I don't know, $5? As soon as I said 
this woman who was standing right next to me turned around and said, I'll buy it for $10. And I'm like, is, this is not an auction. You wait until we're done talking before you even bother jumping in to say anything. That is incredibly rude. Because he could have said, would you do 10? And I should, and I would, I could have said yes. I wouldn't have said yes, but that's not the point. It's not an auction. You cannot do that. I already asked about it, and we're talking. Butt out. I don't like that woman. Fuck her. And now that I'm done being mad, at least I bought this game for only a dollar. Hooray. But out yard sailing that day, I also bought NCAA Football 08 because it was worth the pennies I paid for it. I also got Madden NFL 09 from the same woman um, that I got football from. And I got DJ Hero from a yard sale that I guess was being manned by two teenage girls because I didn't see any adults around. But yeah, DJ Hero. Which, uh, oh man, it's all the way over there. Jump cut, be right back. Here I am. It, uh, it actually also came with the turntable. Uh, together for the two of them, I think I only paid like five bucks. Uh, I don't care to play this game very much, um, but it's cool to own this. It's a piece of video game history, and it likes to wobble around and stuff. So, Kalu Kale, Frab Just Day. Yeah. More things from New Jersey GamerCon. Legendary Wings for NES. It's a Capcom classic. Um, it's a shoot 'em up, but it's not a space shooter. You play as what I can only assume is like an angel with a gun. Uh, check out the cover. And uh, I, I have played this game before, but I don't really know the plot. But yeah, you play as a dude with wings, and you shoot things. It's 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 super cool. Um, it's a fun take on the traditional space shoot 'em up by being not a space shoot 'em up, and it's very quirky and fun. I really recommend it. It's not rare by any means. I would consider it uncommon, but not nearly very uncommon. Probably just a little bit past the common marker on the timeline. And by timeline, I mean like marking line. <sighs> I can't talk today. Of rarity of games. Pick it up. It's fun. You know what else is fun? Mischief Makers! For Nintendo 64, uh, I picked this thing up uh, at the video game Trading Post here in Levittown because I had some extra spare store credit because I turned in the NESs that um, I got yard sailing last month. I don't even know if I told that story since I didn't hang on to them, but I went yard sailing last month in June and picked up two NESs. Um, actually, no. I got them from George. That's right. I got them from George when he gave me all that stuff. I think I did talk about that, so, and I traded them in for store credit. I got enough store credit from them to buy four games, um, and Mischief Makers was one of them. So, yeah. Mischief Makers is a uh, 2D platformer on the N64. It's 2.5D. And uh, it's super fun. It's, it's actually a lot of fun. Um, a lot of people love this game, including me. So go out and pick it up. It's actually not that uncommon. You could totally find this game, and it's relatively cheap. So do yourself a favor and buy Mischief Makers. You're not going to regret it. Another NES game that I picked up at New Jersey GamerCon, Commando. It's an arcade classic. Um, it's another shoot 'em up made by Capcom, where you're not in space. Instead, you're a soldier on the ground shooting a bunch of dudes behind cover and in trenches and things. So, um, it's another super cool game. It's a classic, and I love it. And it's super common and really cheap. So, do yourself a favor and pick this one up. I just happened not to have it. But now I do, so haha. -ha. Another game that I picked up at the trading post with that store credit is Magical Tetris Challenge, which, despite the cover of the game is actually a Disney-themed Tetris game. Um, I guess that's where the magical comes from. 
uh, yeah, um, it was made by Capcom, but they received, they got licensed from Disney to put a bunch of fucking Disney characters in this. So it's Mickey, and Dorbald, and Goompy, and Minji, and Pluto, and all the other great Disney characters that we all know and love. And even Desi Arnaz, you know, Donald's girlfriend, Desi. So, yeah. Magical Tetris Challenge. It's super fun. It's just a whole bunch of Tetris with weird quirks and Disney characters. Pick it up. I love it. Who wants to talk about PlayStation 1 sports games? Anyone? Only me? Well, that sucks. I don't want to talk about them either. I just lied to all of you. But Jackie and I, as I said, we went thrifting when yard sailing started to uh, feel a little too hot because of the weather. And we took a couple trips to Savers on not just one day, but a couple. And boy, did I clean house on all their stupid, shitty sports games for PlayStation 1. Let's see. What do I have here? We'll just do these real quick because they're goddamn sports games for PS1. Am I ever happy to own these? Madden NFL 99. PGA Tour 98. NHL Power Play 96. NHL Face-Off 2001. Sorry about the glare, I'll hold them over here. NHL Breakaway 98. NHL 2000. NHL 97. NCAA Final Four 99. Say that 7,000 times fast. And of course, Madden 2000. I understand why they release sports games every year, it's because the rosters change, but goddamn, are we really playing sports games just for the players? It's the same goddamn game, it's a sport. How different can one basketball game be from another basketball game? Now that's just my opinion, if you out there really enjoy playing sports games and you can see the validity in releasing different sports games, that's fine, you're not wrong. I just don't understand, and I don't need to be convinced because, as I've already said, that's just my opinion, and I don't think you're a bad person for liking sports games. That's just my opinion. But yeah, isn't it fun to go out and buy a game for $60 that within fucking months becomes $1? That's great. Sports games. The easiest thing to collect if you just wait a month or so. Yay. Okay, here's a super cool one. I talked about label variants in my June um, episode, and I got another one. That one was Super Mario Brothers slash Duck Hunt. This one is Super Mario Brothers 3. And uh, as you can see here, here's two versions of Super Mario Brothers 3. See the difference? Most people probably can't, but I'll point it out. This one is the one most people probably own because it was the second print of Super Mario Bros. 3. They fixed a couple spelling errors in the code and they decided to change the label as well. There are two things different about this label. The first one is not as obvious, but the uh, text down here is slightly different. And the second one is a lot more obvious. The bros is here next to the three. This is the first run print where this text is slightly different from this text. But also, the word bros is here on the left. This version is a lot more uncommon and a lot more highly sought after because of it. So I'm glad I got this from my buddy Phil, who keeps getting me really, really good deals. So now I have both of them. As I said, this was the original version of Super Mario Bros. 3. It had a couple spelling errors in the minigames, and then they re-released it as this version and changed a couple things on the label. Who knows why they decided to change the label. It doesn't really matter, but check it out. There's two versions of Mario 3. I bet you didn't know that. When Jackie and I were at New Jersey GamerCon, we visited a couple panels. And one of the panels that we visited was a Can You Name the Video Game Cover Art Just From the Art Game panel. Oy. Anyway, the panel was pretty simple. You sit down, and these guys are up at the front, and they show video game box art with the title blanked over. So you can't read it, you just have to identify it based on the art. And you raise your hand, you answer, and if you're correct, you get to go up and win a random prize. And a lot of those prizes are actually video games, which 
I was like, oh man, free games for knowing things about games? That's like a gamer's dream. So, of course, I raised my hand on one of the questions, and I guessed correctly the box art for Awesome Possum Kicks Dr. Machino's Butt for Sega Genesis. And they were very impressed that I knew the full title of the game, and I won Little Nicky for Game Boy Color, which I know nothing about. Hooray. Also at New Jersey GamerCon, I got Lock and Chase for Game Boy. Um, it's just a Pac-Man clone, but I really enjoy it, so I wanted to pick it up. I got it for only two bucks, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna play the crap out of this thing. Lock and Chase. Pac-Man clone. Hooray. Probably the coolest pickup um, that uh, was Game Boy related for me this month uh, was also at New Jersey GamerCon. I got F1 Race uh, in the long box, complete with the Game Boy 4-way link cable adapter. So, of course, I'll open this up and show that off. But, there it is. There's the 4-way link adapter with the, you know, the cord is coiled there. But, of course, as always, it is including the game. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't have the manual anymore, but the registration receipt thing is still in here. So it's not complete because it doesn't have the instructions for F1 Race, but I think it's still cool that the adapter is here and the game. So I'm really happy that I have all of them together in the box. You guys know me pretty well by this point. I love getting things all together in the box. It makes collecting a lot easier. Finding stuff all together is way easier than having to look for separate parts on separate days of separate years. It took me, like, forever to complete my copy of Super Smash Bros. Melee. I think you guys remember that from, like, a million videos ago. But yeah, when you can get everything all together like this, super cool. Of course, this one doesn't have the manual, like I said, but I'll get it eventually. It's the last piece and probably shouldn't be that expensive. Mwah. I love you. Another thing I got from my buddy Justin at the flea market is Echo the Dolphin, Defender of the Future. So I had Echo Fever at this yard, at this uh, flea market, I suppose. Um, this is not a particularly good game. This was the last Echo game before Echo died, basically. Not the actual dolphin, but the series. And uh, yeah, not a lot of people give a shit about this game. Um, I think it also came to GameCube and like PlayStation 2, if I remember. I am not 100% sure. But yeah, it was originally a Dreamcast exclusive because Echo is a Sega property. But then the Dreamcast died and Echo died and all of our dolphin dreams died. So yeah. Echo the Dolphin. Defender of dying. Except he didn't defend the dying. The dying happened. Whoops. Ouch. Another NES game that I picked up at New Jersey GamerCon. Another Black Box classic by Nintendo, Urban Champion. It's uh, an early beat-em-up game for the NES. Nintendo threw their hat in the ring again. And uh, this one's actually okay, even though it's never-ending. You just keep going and going and going and going and going and going and going. And it gets boring after a while. But it's kind of cool, and I really enjoy it. Urban Champion, happy to have it. While I was at New Jersey GamerCon, I also decided to pick up Gran Turismo, which, uh, did you know, I actually didn't know this was a large case game. It's only one disc, and I'm not lying about that. Even though you can see the disc here, it might seem like this is empty, but that's actually not a disc spindle. It's just a little PlayStation logo. There's no disc spindle there. This was meant to hold only one disc. And sure enough, just in case the haters out there don't believe me, it says one disc right here. Why is this in a gigantic case? Well, I guess it's because of all the literature that came with it. Keep in mind, the jewel cases for PlayStation games were their boxes. Uh, they didn't have big, large boxes and then this came inside. This is the box. So if you need a whole fuck ton of literature to go with your game, it has to fit in a jewel case, and if it doesn't, well, then you have to use a dual case. A dual jewel, as they're called. As I call them, I should say. But yeah, there's two booklets, so I guess they needed to use a case this large. 
Gran Turismo is a racing game that I'm actually pretty fond of. I actually like it. So I wanted to pick it up, and I did. And now I have it. That's how buying things works. Hooray. I also got Rayman, the greatest hits version from New Jersey Gamer Con for PlayStation. Um, we talked about Rayman before because of Rayman Origins. This is the very first Rayman, and it's where the series started. It's a platformer that's super fluid and quirky, and I love it. Made by Ubisoft before they got their shitty logo. I like this one a lot better. Why did you change your logo, Ubisoft? Get the fuck out of here. But yeah, it's Rayman. I don't have to say much more about Rayman than I've already said, so let's move on. So I got a couple Wii things yard sailing also. I picked up Crash of the Titans from this one yard sale where uh, this little girl was like, that used to be my game, and I'm gonna sell it to you. And I was like, okay, little girl, um, would you take like $2 for it? And her mom walks up and goes, um, I think it's worth a lot more than that. Remember, this used to be her game. And I'm like, lady, I'm not here to make your kid feel special. I'm here to buy a game. I'm not trying to uh, overpay just to make your daughter happy. If you want her to have an extra $3, she can have an extra $3. So I haggled down to three instead of five now that I was talking to her mother, and her mother said yes. So for $3, I got Crash of the Titans. Nice try using your kid there, though, lady. Very good on you. That's, that's a way to be a parent. Because I'm sure you're giving her that money, right? I also got a couple of sports titles from uh, this one house. I got uh, Madden NFL 2010. Who cares? I got the holy grail of all Scott Wozniak fans, myself included. Madden NFL 08. Boy, howdy, I love this game. And I also got The Bigs for Wii, which is one of the few Wii games that doesn't have a white spine. Who knows why? But yeah, um, who really knows why at all indeed? Let's move on. Let's talk about some awesome PlayStation 2 games for a change, huh? Crash Nitro Kart always wanted this game, and my interest in it reignited when um, Crash Team Racing, um, Refu whatever the fuck it's called, the new one for PlayStation 4, came out. Um, I've always been interested in other kart racers besides just Mario Kart, even though that's my favorite of the genre. So seeing this, I was really happy to pick it up. Um, I got this, again, at... Um, New Jersey Gamer Con, and I was really happy that I did. So, yeah, that's cool. And I got two other games at New Jersey Gamer Con. Uh, actually, if I'm being completely honest, uh, Jackie bought both of these for me. Not because I asked her to, but because she really wanted me to own them. I had them both on my list of pickups already, and I told her I was going to get them at some point, but she didn't want to wait. She wanted me to have them, and I love her for that. Thank you, Jackie. Shadow of the Colossus. I can't believe I didn't already have this. And it's the black box version. Yes! If you don't know about Shadow of the Colossus, I am not telling you about it. Look up gameplay footage. This game is worth it. I shouldn't have to tell you why this game is good. Go find out for yourself and be impressed. And Sly 2 Band of Thieves, because Jackie and I found Sly Cooper 1 together at a Savers. Um, back in uh, May, I believe, and uh, she wanted me to have Sly 2 also. The greatest hits version, but again, doesn't matter to me. It's cooler to have the black box version, but the game is the game. So thank you, Jackie. I'm really happy to have these thanks to you, and to have all three of these thanks to New Jersey GamerCon. God bless. what could possibly go wrong. It's Bubsy, the mascot platformer that tried to outdo the likes of Mario and Sonic the Hedgehog and failed miserably because it was Bubsy. I decided to buy this shining turd at New Jersey GamerCon for $13. 
because it came with the box. So yeah, here is the cartridge. And here is the box with the cartridge. It's the Bobcat Bubsy. The cool thing about this was that I actually already owned the manual because I found it inside a Sega Genesis box that someone gave to me a couple years ago. It was just in there for whatever reason, so I kept it, because why not? Eventually I'll get Bubsy, right? Because I suck. So now, my version of Bubsy is 100% complete, and my soul for owning this game is 100% less complete. I'll tell you what could possibly go wrong. Bubsy. Bubsy could. Bubsy is the thing that could possibly go wrong. And it did. I'm so happy that I found a lot of people at the Belmore Flea Market in July that weren't resellers. Oh man. I walked up to this one booth and found Blades of Steel for NES and said, how much for your games? Because he had a couple, but this was the only one I wanted. And he was like, five dollars a game. And I was like, that sounds like what someone who isn't a reseller and doesn't know what the fuck they're doing would say. There are three types of sellers of video games. Person A is a reseller. They know what they have and it'll be priced accordingly. The last two types... The last two types both don't know what they have. But here's the difference. The first of those two... They don't know what they have, so they price everything super low, because they're like, this is just junk. Whatever. Person B in that category doesn't know what they have, so they assume it's super valuable and they price it high because it's old, vintage junk. This was Person B. He was selling a bunch of crappy NES games for $5 a piece. So I just looked at the game and I looked at him and I was like, um... I know kind of a bit about this kind of stuff, it's really not worth that much. Would you take two dollars? He asked for three, and I said that that was fine. This is worth more than three dollars, so yeah, Blades of Steel. Hooray. Um, it's a hockey game. I'm not the biggest fan of hockey. I actually like ice hockey for Nintendo, um, the one made by Nintendo, and uh, that's it's a really fun game. I like it a lot. Um, Blades of Steel, not so much. It's a little more realistic, and the cartoony charm is why I like ice hockey so much. Um, unfortunately, when I brought this game home, um, it didn't actually even boot up. I had to clean it so thoroughly before it would even produce a flicker. So it does work, but it needs a lot of finagling, so I'll likely replace it at some point. But I was happy to pick it up, and there it is. Blades of Steel. Well, let's just finish out the NES games. From uh, New Jersey GamerCon, <laughs> I also decided to pick up To the Earth, um, which I don't know too much about, but I guess someone had told me about it a long time ago because I added it to my t list of things to pick up. And when I saw it there, I was like, is that on my list? And I looked, and it was, and I was like, all right, then I'll just pick it up. It was only $2. Why not? So, To the Earth, I still don't really know much about it, but just like the Seventh Saga, I'm going to experience it for the first time and figure out what it's about. It doesn't look like it wouldn't be that much fun. I mean, it's got space on it, and as we all know, in the 80s, space games were everything. So how terrible could it be? Who really knows? I certainly don't, and that's the best part! From Nikki from Let Go, that woman who sold me games out of a box in her trunk again, I got this weird strategy game that I had actually never even heard of. Shingen the Ruler. It has the rules of the game on the cover art. That's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. I guess that's how in-depth it is. I probably would never be able to play this without the manual or looking up the manual online. So my chances of playing this have unfortunately dropped since realizing that. But uh, I've heard that if you're a big fan of strategy games, this is a hoot. So we'll see. Maybe at some point I will give it uh, a fair shot. But uh, until then, 
here's to you, Shingen the Ruler. Apparently this game is considered uncommon, so I'm happy to have it in my collection anyway. Thank you, Nikki. Also from Nikki, I got one of my favorite NES games, which made this transaction all the sweeter, Rygar, which is an amazing arcade game that was ported to NES and even the NES version is so damn good. Uh, it is a platformer that also has top-down elements similar to Zelda. Um, it's an action platformer where you beat the shit out of things and you get health power-ups and potions and collectibles and things. Oh, it's so much fun. And uh, it's got a weird plot that I won't bother explaining here because I want you, just like Shadow of the Colossus, to go check out this game. It's super cool. Go check out Rygar. Thank you, Nikki. This was the best game in the bunch of things that you sold me, so thanks a lot. I'm so happy to own Rygar. And uh, from the video game trading post, the other two things that I bought with the store credit from the NES trade-ins, uh, I finally decided to just get this one out of the way because I needed to. Uh, I got Bases Loaded 3. It's a baseball game. Probably never going to play it. Maybe once, maybe twice. But uh, I needed it. It's a staple of the NES collection, so I wanted it. I got it. And I also got Adventures in the Magic Kingdom, which is a classic Capcom Disney licensed game uh, where you play as some kid who is in the Magic Kingdom at Disneyland in California. And you go on all the different rides and you collect, like, keys or something? I don't know. Basically, you have to go through the park, go on the rides, and it's a platformer, and it's really fun. Hooray. So I'm happy to own these two games, and that's the last of the NES stuff that I picked up this month. So let's move on to other things. So also at the Belmore Flea Market, uh, I was just walking around trying to find games from people who weren't resellers, but I actually found a reseller who's actually a friend of mine. <laughs> And we started talking, um, so if you're watching this, which is unlikely, but just in case, hello, Anthony, it was cool to see you there. And um, he was like, hey, since I know you, if there's anything you want, let me know and I'll give you a, like a really good discount. So I was looking around and I didn't have that much money left and I also needed to go somewhere after the flea market, so I just wanted to pick up one or two things. But I noticed that he had Sega Saturn games and having just gotten a Saturn at the beginning of this year, I'm still looking to start a more hefty collection. As you can see, I have very few games for it right here. So I decided to pick up a Sega Rally Championship, which, uh, yeah, I actually really wanted this game and, um, he had it there for, I think, like, seven bucks, but I handed it to him, and he was like, how's five sound? And I was like, would you consider doing four? I just want to save as much money as I can. And he's like, I know, I know, you're you, I'll do four dollars. Four bucks for a Sega Rally Championship. Really fun racing game, actually. I really enjoy it, and, uh, yeah, when you die in this game and get a game over, it has one of the best game over themes of all time. Look it up on YouTube, I'm not replicating it here. So that was awesome. Thanks, Anthony, and thank you, Sega, for making this gem of a game. Would you believe that actually wasn't the only Sega Saturn game that I got this month? Um, at that same um, game show where I won Little Nicky for Game Boy Color, uh, I also answered a second question. Um, I actually can't remember off the top of my head right now which question I answered. I'd have to ask Jackie. She might remember, but I can't think of it off the top of my head now, which is going to suck when I have to write my game called article about it. Oh, geez. But anyway, um, I answered another question correctly, and I won a Star Wars collectible card game slash board game, which I don't have here, because after the panel was over, I started talking to another one of the um, audience members, and we got to talking, and he was like, how did you know about the Awesome Possum? And I was like, because I suck. And he's like, well, it's still really cool. Honestly, I really like the Star Wars thing, by the way. It's super awesome. And he had actually answered a question correctly and won a Sega Saturn game. And I was like, yeah, actually, I think your prize is really cool, too. Do you own a Sega Saturn? Because not a lot of people do. And he said, no, not really. I'm not really interested in owning one, so I don't know what I'm going to do with this. And then it clicked. He just complimented the board game I won 
and he doesn't plan on ever buying a Sega Saturn. I asked him if he'd consider trading with me. He was very happy that I asked. He was like, really? Really? Yeah, I, I'd rather have the Sega Saturn game. He's like, oh, dude, absolutely. And we swapped, and I got NFL Quarterback Club 97, which means more to me than a Star Wars collectible card game slash board game. I love Star Wars, and I also collect board games, but I collect video games more. So if you give me the choice between a board game and a video game, I'm going to take the video game almost 100% of the time. Thank you. I believe that gentleman's name was Hunter. Thank you, Hunter. This made me very happy, and it made Jackie surprised uh, <laughs> that you accepted that trade. Uh, I don't know why, it just did, and that was funny to me. So thank you, Hunter. I appreciate it. NFL Quarterback Club 97 for Sega Saturn. While we were out Goodwilling, we also stopped at the Goodwill at uh, in Comac here on Long Island, and while we were on our way there, I was talking to Jackie about how I've always wanted to find um, all the different um, models of certain consoles. And she was like, are there any in particular that you are really looking for right now? And I said, well, a lot of them, but um, if I could name a couple off the top of my head, I would name these. And one of the ones that I named, just because it's easy to find, is the second model of the Nintendo Wii, which is the Wii Family Edition. It looks almost exactly like a regular Wii, except that all of the text is printed 90 with a 90 degree rotation because it's meant to be laid on its side instead of stood up like the original Wii. It also lacks GameCube functionality, they took it out of the system, and so the doors on top for GameCube controllers and memory cards are just straight up bolted onto the console and they don't open. And we were talking about it, and Jackie was like, that's cool. It's cool that, you know, they had so many different models, and you know about them. And I was like, yeah, it, it is cool. But as common as that version is, actually, I've never come across it, <laughs> despite how common it is. Well, then we walked into the Goodwill. And here it is. <laughs> this is a Black Wii Family Edition. I wasn't expecting to see it there, and I couldn't afford it. They wanted 20 bucks for it. And it's worth that much, actually. It's, it's, it's worth more than that. So I was like, oh god, no way! And Jackie was like, oh my god, we were just talking about it! And I was like, yeah, but I can't afford it! And she's like, good thing I love you, here's 20 bucks! And I was like, no, you can't possibly! And she's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> so now I have, on the same day that I was complaining I hadn't found one for the longest time, a Wii Family Edition. As you can see, it is meant to be laid on its side, and this would be the top, and I can't open these doors. In fact, there are no doors. It's one solid piece. This cannot play GameCube games. So yeah. Thank you, Jackie. I really appreciate that, and Nintendo, thanks for making so many different models of your consoles. I honestly find that cool. That there are so many different versions of different consoles. I like that. So, thanks everyone. Now I own this thing. And you don't. Because most people owned a regular game. Just saying. Alright, we've come to the last round of things. And I'm going to do them all at once because I got them all together and they all have to do with each other. So first off, at Ben's Yard Sale, not only did I get a whole bunch of Sega Game Gear games, but he also gave me his Sega Game Gear carrying case. This is an official piece of Sega merchandise used to carry Game Gear games. And inside was, of course, you know, all the spots to hold games. But there was also his Game Gear. I already have a Game Gear. This is the exact same one I already have. So this is not considered a pickup for me. I'm going to be giving this to my buddy Tyler because as of the recording of this video, he comes to visit me in just a little under two weeks so we can go to a convention together. But, I did get quite a couple things other than just the game gear and the case that uh, are important. So first of all, check it out. This is the game gear car adapter. It actually says 
Sega on it and car adapter. Adapter is spelled wrong for whatever reason. They spelled it with an O, but adapter should be spelled with an E at the end. E-R. Um, but it came with the instructions, which is super cool. I won't bother um, unraveling this piece of paper, but check it out. It came with the instructions. So that's awesome. Um, but he also gave me the Sega Game Gear battery pack. Because of the shitty battery life of the Sega Game Gear, um, Sega made this rechargeable battery pack that with this clip you could hook onto your pants and then plug this into the Game Gear and it would last longer than if you put batteries in it. And you could charge this using a normal AC adapter. And of course, this too came with the instruction manual. So, yeah, there were a lot of weird things that people made for video, for um, handheld video game consoles back in the day. Um, but the fact that Sega themselves came out with some of the weirdest ones just goes to show how terrible the Game Gear actually was when compared with the competition. They needed to come out with a whole new accessory just so it would have a battery life that could measure up piddly to the Game Boys. Hooray, Sega. Really glad you're a third-party developer only now. <laughs> or am I? I I'm actually kind of unhappy that they're only third-party now. But yeah, that'll do it. That is everything. So as usual, one more jump cut, and uh, we'll wrap this thing up like I'm trying very hard right now while talking to you to wrap these things up. So yeah, that'll do it. Thank you guys so much for sitting through this gigantic mess of a video because I got tons and tons of shit in July. This has been the single most lucrative month for me for video game collecting since I started. And so this will probably be the longest video on this channel for a long time. But we'll see how things go in the future. August is up next. I got a lot of stuff then too, but not nearly, not nearly as much as July. So the video will be of a normal length again. Thanks so much. Stay tuned for not only videos of this nature, but also my Let's Plays, things about my music, and other things that I haven't uploaded about in quite some time. They're coming very soon. Hugs and kisses from me, Uncle Matt. Buy and play more video games, please.